Alrighty. So let's talk about these freaking godforsaken dang HD digital DJI goggles and units and such. Shall we? All right. So first of all, I want to talk about, oh, if you guys are here for some kind of like technical review on these, I am not your guy. Go to like Andy RC or Bardwell or Andy RC always does a great, incredible, thorough job breaking down the super technical stuff on new products. Ferrati has a ton of videos out on these, you know, everybody. And of course, everybody now has, there's a gazillion videos out there on the 50 megabytes per second and all that stuff. This is going to be my, just my personal thoughts, nitpicks, whatever on the whole system. So here we are. First of all, I have, first of all, um, the first time I tried these, I was with a bunch of my, I was with the crew and on our crew, we have a couple of Italian guys. And of course, uh, I think, uh, one guy's from Canada or something. I don't know. Co anyway, a couple of Italian guys, um, with, you know, the big block freaking Italian heads. I have my, uh, my French buddy. That has a, a nose like a like he could swoop down on the surface surface of a lake and and scoop out a fish. <laughs> I have a couple of uh, Asian guys on the crew, and then there's me. You know the German guy with the big giant light bulb shaped head with eyes like a catfish, way out to the sides. So I have to put the IPDs all the way out on any of the goggles I've ever owned to be able to see anything, and the stock foam on these goggles fit absolutely freaking no one okay <laughs> so when i first tried these things that was my gripe number one is that they had a ton of light leak they were super uncomfortable i could not get them to fit on my face right um but so when i got mine i bought one of these colored aftermarket foams which was actually pretty comfortable now what in the stack configuration i bought two because i knew i was going to end up hacking it up it has all this um foam in the middle but that was squashing my nose so i ended up picking this foam out of the middle of there and hot glue in the little fabric back down and then it was very comfortable and i had no light leaks but it was a little too squishy and the goggles were a little too close to my face bringing them a fuzz out of focus and then, because all my crew is flying DJI nowadays, they recommended I get the DJI Comfort Foam. So I got this DJI Comfort Foam, which sits the goggles at a perfect distance from my face and is very, very comfortable. The only thing with this was, is it came with this little, it just came with a little foam strip for the nose piece with some double-sided tape glue thing on there and I couldn't get it to sit in there right and it didn't stay in there whatever so anyway what I ended up doing was cutting the nose piece out of the stock foam that came with it now maybe somebody likes the stock foam I don't know maybe somebody needs it for their glasses eyes whatever I think they have IPD things out for these now but it didn't work out well for me or anybody that I know but once I put this comfort foam on there and cut the stock nose piece out and then I glued the little hot glued the little strip to the top of the stock nose piece foam to seal off my nose right now. Now there is no light leaks and these things fit freaking fantastic, super comfortable. I can fly with them all day long. Okay, so now the second thing, right? I was on the fence with these things forever and ever because you know i've been flying for years i have a pleth i like my hdos you know i have a freaking plethora of analog gear so not only was i gonna have to like give up 
if I liked it, you know, how I was going to have to give up most of my analog gear to fly freestyle on top of the cost for this. Because I have a freaking plethora of cameras. Any freaking sort you want, even old school Eagles that are still basically brand new. Antennas. Brand new antennas. Well, I can still use most of these antennas. These are all left handed, actually. But that's not the point. A ton of cameras. Splits, hybrids, racers, eagles, all still in the box. A whole freaking ton of VTXs of all sorts. Evos, Unifies, Rushes, brand new ones still in the case. Not to mention what I have in the quads. Of course, the racers are still going to be on analog so yeah I didn't want to um, have to give up all the money I have in analog gear from here but anyway I will still be using the analog gear for all my racing um, just because like the the DJI is almost too good in my experience so far I, I got these like a couple weeks ago like and then the, the day after the firmware upgrade came so I didn't go through all the stuff in the beginning that people had with glitches or any of that stuff um, but we'll get it we'll get into all that in a minute because I, I wanted to fly with them for a, a, a little before I did my my thoughts on the things so that's what I did the other thing that I have a serious gripe with is this is DJI, right? For years and years and years, all of us in FPV have bitched at all the freaking goggle makers about a god dang power button. Why the heck didn't DJI put a power button, like even just some kind of freaking cheap power button in the cord? So we don't, you know, if you yank the barrel connector in and out, it's definitely going to wear out, which also that's another fault of this. This barrel connector comes out very easily. So what I did was scrunch the cord up in there and then just put a little zippy tie on there, which means that I have to yank the cord out of the battery that's in my pocket every time I want to shut the goggles off. So now I'm going to have to make some kind of aftermarket thing to remedy that. For real, this is DJI. That's like the main gripe we've always had about goggles for years and years and years is the power button. So that is definitely another one of my gripes. Okay, now they have integrated most of the Betaflight OSD into these goggles, which is fabulous. But my problem with it is, is that you cannot move the elements around on the screen. They are where they are when they, I'm sure, I, I don't know if it'll be on the beta flight end or if it's on the DJI end that they need to fix that so it'll work in here. I have no idea. I'm no tech firmware software writing guy. But I hope they will fix that in the future so you can move, get all the beta flight OSD elements. Like I can get RSSI but not link quality because I use Crossfire. And like the battery average cell is over here then the total voltage is over here then the rssi up is up here and the um the the video link quality is down here so i end up looking all over the screen to get the information that I, i'd like to be able to just stack up the like all my battery elements in one spot all my freaking connections in one spot you know, megabits per second, blah, 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 blah. So I can just glance over. Okay, that's my average cell. Da, 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 da. You guys know what I'm talking about. So those are my main gripes off the bat for these goggles. So now let's go take them out for a fly. And then we will come back to the bench. And I will give you my final thoughts, whatnot, so on and so forth. Not that anybody freaking cares what I think. Well, actually, a couple, some people cared because 
They messaged me asking me what my thoughts were on these, which kind of blew my mind that anybody gives a shit what I think about it. Okay, it wasn't like a bunch of people. It was like three people, but hey. They're um, subs of mine or whatever, and so here we are. So anyway, let's go fly. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. All right, so here we go. I picked this area because there's a couple spots here that I always have stay that I always have some issue with. So let's see how this goes, shall we? <sighs> Unlocked. We are at 700 milliwatts high quality with the uh, 50 megabytes per second turned on. So, first we're just gonna take a nice cruise around here. Like I did a first impressions video on this the other day, but then they had the firmware upgrade. So I just figured I would do like the whole thing at once, re-record this. So now we're way the hell over here, and this right here is like a big subway station with air conditioning, power units. There's like the little subway entrance. It's not um, open yet, but I always, always, always get break up here. Cause here's like the entrance to the subway. That's like covered with Wi-Fi and whatnot. We are at 39 milliseconds and still holding at 50 megabits per second. Same thing with right here. This is another little subway entrance. And they have like security cams up here. See the camera right there? And the subway itself with all its electronics, those big um, square things right there are the vents, the air vents. Because when the subway goes through the tunnel, it has to be able to release the air in front of it so it doesn't cause a vacuum in the tunnel. So there's all kinds of electric noise shooting up out of there. So I always get some video interference there. Not unflyable, but it sucks. And right here, which is very far away, I always get noise, like bad noise right here. Like I can usually fly through it, but it's pretty bad right there. And as you can see with this, there's nothing. We're at 36 milliseconds delay, which isn't bad. I'm not really feeling it. Right, like I'm not having any problems flying around here. And I'm pretty sensitive to uh, to latency, like it will get me like seasick. And I haven't had any problems with that. So as you can see, now let's see how far away I am. I'm like 500 meters away. I'm like that little tiny dot way the hell over there. And like I said, normally with my analog system, at comparable voltage, wattage, wattage, 800, 800 um, milliwatts when I fly over here, I get video noise. So let's cruise all the way around this thing. We're just cruising to check everything out. Some random dude walking along there. And like, I haven't even seen like any much like digital artifacting or anything on the high quality mode, maybe a little bit in the grass. But it is crystal clear. Here's another spot right here. Whenever I go down in this area right here, I always get breakup. Again, not completely unflyable, but not desirable. Right here in front of these tunnels, always, always get some breakup. And there's like freaking nothing, crystal clear. Unbelievable. So now we'll just kind of play around with the light poles here a little bit. Cause like, there's no like flash in the camera. Like when you go up to the sky, there's no change in the video. Like I can see everything crystal freaking clear. It's 
pretty unbelievable. Like I said, I wanted to hate it, but I just can't. It's just too freaking good. Like I, I have no problems getting really close to things because I can see them. There's a freaking bug climbing on my ear. Got him. It is fucking crazy good. Crazy good. Like I can see every inch of everything. All right, my battery is freaking dead. So let's bring her on in. Wow, just wow. It is blazing hot out here, guys. So that's about all the flying we're gonna be doing today. <laughs> all right, so as we can see, the pic picture and link quality is absolutely freaking outstanding. Like the first, I put, I put the, um, the Vista unit I bought the kit with the, the air units and one Vista, and I put the Vista in my QAVR V2 Slam here. And after the first time I took it out and flew some packs through this quad right here, I immediately purchased three more Vistas. So that should give you what I think about this system so far uh, the pick and link quality is outstanding those areas that I flew in and I showed you I normally get interference and break up anywhere I got any business that my battery can reach on a quad within like a thousand yards the picture never freaking even glitched once like insane quality um, the user interface at this point is pretty fantastic. As I said, there's a couple little things I would like to see happen, like being able to move the, the OSD around on the screen. But, um, and I know TBS is also doing their, um, their uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for, their little, uh, cloud together where everything works together interface with the fusion tango unify you know so it all works together and changes channels and of course we can already change channels on the osd by using our um controllers and adjust the camera if we have the camera link and everything hooked up but the the interface on this is freaking awesome you just hit the little joystick change the channels change the power change the video quality or whatever mode you want to be in do the camera settings you can turn up the saturation up and down or the brightness or whatever um 99 fantastic i would just like to see the osd thing fixed and also like you can adjust where the picture is on the screen you can move it left to right up and down so you can really get it like right in the middle of where you're sight picture is in the goggles which is freaking fantastic you can switch all the aspect ratios inside of the goggles you can go from 4 by 3 to 16 by 9 you can zoom the picture in and out so whatever your preference is for your eyeballs and your fit you know if the big screen is too much and confusing and make you motion sick you can shrink it down it's just it, it it's pretty freaking fantastic i have to say and um, of course, then you have the DVR that now is getting 50 megabytes per second. I haven't installed the air unit in anything yet to see how the 50 megabytes per second works out in the air unit, but it is pretty fantastic. And RC Shim, and a, uh, there's another guy, if you go to RC Shim's thing where he does the super view, he's got a link down in his description for an app now that you just put on your computer and he can just drag and drop a four by three image in there and it stretches it out for you it renders it automatically 
no sweat no fuss no muss so that's pretty cool for the 50 megabytes per second dvr and the air unit but that being said i mean that's that is pretty darn good video quality and the wide dynamic range is pretty fantastic way better than like a split or the um caddix turtle thing tazir fox ear any of that stuff the wide dynamic range and picture quality is going to be way better with this but that being said even a gopro sessions um five i think is still 60 megabits per second on the recording and i think the recordings actually come out of this at like 40 megabits per second i could be wrong on that i'm not absolutely sure andy rc did it you know a couple other people did it on that but the the gopro even the sessions is still going to be you're still going to have a little bit more to work with at the end of the day um but that being said it's still pretty freaking fantastic that you can onboard record in that high of bits per second and the picture is freaking amazing at 50 megabits per second they doubled up the bandwidth so it's not giving it's not you didn't get any more power so there's not more range there but there's more picture quality inside that range because you have double the information coming back to the goggles so when you're in like focus mode whatever you have so many more so much more information coming in that it, I, I my goggles have yet to go into like focus mode that i've seen maybe a little blurring in the corners when i'm way out there but that's it anyway so my take on the whole thing so far is i am still getting used to these and they are almost too good to the point where i'm like diving down a tree or something like that and i forget to look at my gap my line and my exit line because i'm looking over at the leaves on the tree going wow and then i'm like oh shit, and i gotta pull out of it that's why i'm saying i don't think that i will be using these for racing anytime soon even if they make it where you can um the timing systems and stuff work now uh, that was the other holdback for me on these goggles is that there's no screen sharing or no sharing the video signal so you you know if all your friends are on dji that's great but i always carry a little screen with me to the park so when some kids or somebody come up i can hand them the analog screen and they can watch me fly and they stay out of my hair that is not yet possible with these so that was another hold back on these for me but other than that um like i said i'll be still using my analog for racing because i just want to see the next gate and i don't need all that extra information coming into my eyeballs when i'm just trying to focus on a line and the speed and whatnot so that is about it people that is my thoughts on the dji upgraded hd system there you go i would advise anybody that can afford it for freestyle this is definitely the shit man no freaking doubt about it bandos link quality no fuzzy picture this is the shit but as i always say do whatever the fuck you want to do all right peace